We just got finished talking about triangles, and now we're going to talk about quadrilaterals. This is Lesson 25b. We're also going to talk about diagonals and missing angle measures. And, you know me, I've got links in the description to help you. The word quadrilateral actually means four sides. Quad means four, lateral means sides. If a polygon has four sides, it'll have four angles, and it'll be a quadrilateral. The interior angle measures of a quadrilateral will total 360 degrees. We learned in video 25a, the previous video, that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle must be 180 degrees. A quadrilateral is made from two triangles, so 180 plus 180 equals 360. This is a diagonal of this parallelogram. It splits it into two triangles. See that? There's actually another diagonal going this way, but I just drew this one because I want to show you the two triangles. If I drew it going this way, it would make a triangle here and a triangle up there. It's a line segment that connects two non-adjacent, that means opposite, vertices of a polygon. So this diagonal con connects this vertex to this vertex. See that? We talked about tick marks in the last video. This one tick mark angle matches this one tick mark angle. This two tick mark angle matches that two tick mark angle. This three tick mark side matches that three tick mark side. See? And that four matches that four. That means they're congruent to the one that has the same amount of tick marks. So this is a parallelogram, and its opposite sides are parallel and congruent. That means that side is parallel to that side, and they're congruent, they're the same length, and this side is parallel to this side, and they're the same length. Its opposite angles are congruent. So A is congruent to C, and B is congruent to D. They're also supplementary. A and D are supplementary. They total 180 degrees when added together, and B and C will total 180 degrees when added together. The diagonals crisscross like this. This diagonal is long, and this diagonal is short. So if we know the measure of angle A is 60 degrees, that means C has to be 60 degrees, doesn't it? And if we don't know what B and D are, we can represent them with X. We know if we add all the angle measures together, they should be 360 degrees. We've got angle A. We don't know what angle B is. We've got angle C. We don't know what angle D is. They need to equal 360 degrees. And because B and D are congruent, they're opposite angles, we can make them both X. So we could do 60 plus x plus 60 plus x for a, b, c, d. We can combine the like terms. 60 plus 60 is 120. x plus x is 2x. We can use our knowledge of algebra and add a negative 120 to both sides of the equation, create a zero, zero pair here, and get 2x is equal to 240 degrees. Divide both sides by this coefficient 2 and get that x is equal to 120 degrees. So we know both angle B and angle D are each 120 degrees. Okay? Here's a rectangle. It has two pairs of parallel sides. This side is parallel to this one, and this side is parallel to that one. It has four right angles that are each 90 degrees. See our little boxes? And it's got diagonals that are equal length. Because it's got four right angles, the diagonals are the same length as each other. Whereas, because this didn't have four right angles, this diagonal was longer than that one. See? But in a rectangle, they're the same length. It's also considered a special parallelogram, and I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes. Here we have a rhombus. It's got four sides of equal length. It's a parallelogram. Its opposite sides are parallel. Its opposite angles are equal and it's considered a special parallelogram. A is congruent to C, and B is congruent to D. See how the tick marks match? But all the sides are the same length. See that? If we know the measure of angle A is 110 degrees, then that must be the same as C. So we know then A and C are 110 degrees. We could find B and D. We can re represent them as X because they're opposite and congruent. They can both be x. We add the 110 plus the 110 and get 220. We add the x and the x and get 2x. We add a negative 220 to both sides of the equation to create a zero pair here and get 2x is equal to 140. We divide both sides by the coefficient 2 to create 1x. And 
we get 70 degrees on this side of the equal sign, so we know the angle of B, measure of angle B is 70 degrees and the measure of angle D is 70 degrees. Okay? Here we have a square and four sides. It's got four sides of equal length. All the sides are the same measure. Its opposite sides are parallel. Those are parallel. Those are parallel. It's got four 90 degree angles. We write it as line AB is parallel to DC. You could say CD. It doesn't matter. And that AD is parallel to BC. That's parallel to that, and that's parallel to that. And we know that all the corners are 90 degrees, and its diagonals are perpendicular to each other. See how it's got the little right angle mark in there? And they're the same length. That diagonal is the same length as that one. And it's considered a special parallelogram. Now here we have an isosceles trapezoid and a trapezoid. An isosceles trapezoid has the bases as the top and the bottom, and it's got opposite sides that are congruent. So this side, this leg, is the same as this side, this leg. They're the same length, like an isosceles triangle, except it's an isosceles trapezoid. The angles on each side of the bases are congruent. So now A and B are congruent. See, in the rhombus, the opposite one, A and C, were congruent. Now we've got this one and this one are congruent, and this one down here and this one down here are congruent. D and C are congruent. See that? The angle A is supplementary with D. They total together 180 degrees. And if you add B and C together, they'll be 180 degrees. Now, this is just a trapezoid. It's not an isosceles trapezoid. Now, notice it's got no diagonals. And notice this one has diagonals. See? So this one is sticking out a little bit farther on angle C, isn't it? And the bases are parallel. AB is parallel to DC. And the top base angles are supplementary to the bottom base angle. So A and D will total 180, and B and C will total 180. But these are not the same length. This one's a little bit longer, isn't it? So it could be shaped like an isosceles, where they are the same length. It could have one sticking way out. It could even have a right angle could be sticking way out. So that's a trapezoid, but it's not an isosceles trapezoid. Isosceles trapezoids look perfect, don't they? So we can use the traits of quadrilaterals and our knowledge of different types of angles that we've learned so far, okay, with algebraic equations and find missing angle measures. Here we have quadrilateral ABCD is an isosceles trapezoid. So it's going to be like this one. What is the measure of angle A? Well, it's telling us that D is 70 degrees. Well, the top base angles, this angle is supplementary to this one. See? So if that's 70, we could just do 180 because they both need to total 180, right? And get 110. So we know A is 110 degrees. So what's the measure of angle C? Well, it's going to be the same as D because these are congruent. So we know that C must be 70 degrees. What's the measure of angle A plus B plus C? We could total the 110 for A and the 110 for B. So if that's 110, that's 110, because remember in an isosceles trapezoid, those two are congruent. And we could add C, which we just found out was 70, and get 290 degrees. We could also do it even easier by saying, well, the whole thing needs to be 360 inside. We'll just take away the measure of angle D, 70 degrees, to get the 290, okay? Actually, I think that's quicker. So here's the special parallelograms. We have a, rank, a rectangle, a rhombus, and a square. They have the same properties of a parallelogram plus their own properties, okay? So a parallelogram has four sides, it's got two sets of parallel sides, so this side is parallel to that side. The top is parallel to the bottom. It's got two sets of congruent sides. That is the same length as that. The top is the same length as the bottom. Its opposite angles are congruent. That angle is congruent to that angle, and that angle is congruent to that angle. It's also got consecutive angles that are supplementary. So that one and that one together total 180, and that one and that one together total 180. And it's got diagonals that make two congruent triangles. So this diagonal line right here is making a triangle at the bottom and at the top here. 
this diagonal is making a triangle at the top and the bottom here. See? So a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of opposite, equal, and parallel sides. So the parallel sides are of equal length. And a rectangle has these traits and it has four right angles. And its diagonals have the same length. A rhombus has these traits of the parallelogram and has four congruent sides, all the sides of the same length. And its diagonals bisect the pairs of opposite angles. This diagonal bisects that angle and that angle. This diagonal bisects that angle and that angle. And they're perpendicular to each other. We can see our little right angle box inside of there. See that? A square has the traits of a parallelogram and it has the traits of a rectangle and a rhombus. It's got all of that. And it has four right angles and four sides of equal length and its diagonals are the same length and they're perpendicular. See that? So we've had a lot of important words. I hope you have a notebook that you've been taking notes in. Congruent means having the same size and shape. Adjacent means next to. Non-adjacent means not next to or opposite. Complementary angles, when added together, they'll total 90 degrees. Supplementary angles, when added together, will total 180 degrees. A base is a flat side. Diagonal means it's a line segment that connects two opposite vertices. And a vertex, which the plural is vertices, it's the point where two or more rays meet. Okay? So here was a tough question that came up, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to do this so that I can explain it. A quadrilateral has two right angles and an angle that is twice the measure of the fourth angle. What is the measure of the fourth angle? So you notice how it said fourth angle, fourth angle? So that's going to be our x right away because we see everything's being compared to this fourth angle and it was mentioned a couple times. Fourth angle is our x. So what we can do is break this into little parts. If you had to climb five flights of stairs, you might want to take a break, right? You might want to stop, catch your breath before you continue your climbing. Same with this. Let's break it into little parts. It'll be easier. So we know we have a quadrilateral that has two right angles. All right, so we've got this. Here's a right angle and here's a right angle. So far, that's what it looks like. Then it says an angle that is twice the measure of the fourth angle. So that means we have a third angle that's twice the measure of the fourth angle. That means that third angle is obtuse and that one is acute. That's our acute fourth angle. So because this one's twice the measure, it's going to be open more. It's obtuse than that one, isn't it? They all have to total 360 degrees. So we have 90 degrees and 90 degrees. Then we have angle 3 and angle 4. So that means we have 180 degrees plus everything was being compared to angle 4, so that's x. And if that was twice x, it's 2x. We combine these like terms and get a 3x. We can add a negative 180 to both sides of the equation to create a zero pair here and get 3x equals 180 degrees. We divide both sides by the coefficient 3 and get that x equals 60 degrees. So we know the measure of angle 4 is 60 degrees. We could also find the measure of angle, five, uh, angle 3 because it was 2x. So that means it's 120. All we have to do is total, to check it, the 90 and the 90 and the 60 and the 120 to see if it totals 360 degrees. And if it does, we know we did it correctly. So if you don't want to draw a diagram, you don't have to. But knowing how to assign the variable is going to help you. And if drawings will help you, then make little drawings on your scratch paper. Okay? One thing I can tell you is you're not going to have a lot of scratch paper on the GED test. So don't make really big drawings and really big numbers. Try to write tiny and start on one side of the scratch paper and slowly work your way over and then you can use the back too. But don't use your scratch paper with really big uh, work, okay? Try to keep it small so that you can keep using your scratch paper. You should now be ready to do the skill focus on page 301. And memorize the names of the quadrilaterals and their properties. You want to be able to tell a rhombus from a trapezoid. Okay? And you want to, you're going to want to know their traits and their diagonals because if it comes up in a word problem, you want to be able to know what they're talking about. So you can make little flashcards for yourself. You can come up with some kind of game with a friend. But do something so that you know 
the difference between these and the traits that they have, okay? I'm going to have links to some grade 5 and grade 6 math videos that talk about all of this that might be explained a little bit easier in a different way. There's also going to be a link to the triangle, one of 25A. And we're going to talk about congruent figures next in 25C. That's two polygons that might have the same side length or the same angle measures to see if they're congruent to each other, okay? If you have to watch this video a second time, I always say, no big deal. Do it. If that's going to help you pass the test, why not do it? Why not help yourself, right? And watch those side videos. So keep trying, and I know you're going to do great. Just don't quit, all right? I'll see you next video. Have a great day. Bye.